I'd like to give a big welcome to our presenter, Matthew Watkins, as well as to say how grateful I am for the opportunity to teach, learn, and live on the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people here in Vancouver. Education and research at OceanWise really are grateful for the opportunity to incorporate the best practices um, that our local First Nations incorporate into their daily lives of observation and storytelling in everything that we do. And we're really lucky to be able to offer this program here in Vancouver to folks from really anywhere in the world that you might be joining us today. And so that's so wonderful to see our audience connecting in from different cities in Canada, as well as across the states today. So big welcome to everyone. I'll just hand over the presenter abilities to Matthew and then hopefully we'll get him on screen. And we are so excited to be talking about those tiny little fibers and what you can do to learn more about what's going on in your loads of laundry, what's in your wash water. So Matthew, you should have the ability to screen share now. We look forward to connecting with you in just a moment. If you are joining us for the first time to all of our audience members and participants, We'd love to see your engagement throughout the program in the chat, or you can always put questions in the Q&A just at the bottom. And I will be keeping an eye on those all throughout the program so that we can ask Matthew all those great questions and inquiries after his presentation. Thanks so much and over to you. Thanks, Danica. Can you hear me okay? Yes, that's perfect. Okay, we can great. see and hear you now. Oh, perfect. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Matthew Watkins. I am an environmental technologist at OceanWise at the Plastics Lab. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about our clothes in the ocean. It's a research project that evaluated the shedding of various textiles. This is the Plastics Lab team. We are a team of researchers looking into uh, the source, transport, fate, and effects related to microplastics in Canada's aquatic ecosystem or environments. And today's story is an investigation into one highly suspected source, home laundry. So as part of the team, much of my time has been spent, that's me on the left, uh, doing physical work at the wash machine lab to help generate da data I will be discussing in a bit. So firstly, microfibers are, are or, sorry, previously our lab sampled uh, water in the Northeast Pacific as shown here. Uh, this heat map shows the percent abundance of microfibers compared to other microplastics. So microfibers account for approximately 75% of microplastics found in the Northeast Pacific. The distribution is not even and in the near shore zone, up to 95% of total microplastics are microfibers and that's indicated in light red. Textiles are widely thought to be a source of microfibers. Shutting off our clothes as we wear them and making their way to aquatic environments via air or stormwater. And also shutting off our clothes when we do the laundry. In fact, the current assumption amongst our peers is that wastewater treatment plants are likely the main pathway of textile microfibers into aquatic environments. But the truth is we don't know about the relative contributions of each pathway. Still, we want to better understand the so far most highly suspected source, home laundry. Our problem is that previously there was very little data on textile shedding. Little was known about the relative propensity of different materials and designs to shed fibers during home laundry. So the apparel industry had little such information to inform sustainable, pro sustainable product development. 
Our goal here is to better understand the extent of which textile laundry contributes to microfiber pollution in the aquatic environment. There is a lot of work that goes into producing scientifically sound data. Uh, and know that this is a simplified account of what we did. To determine if laundering textiles generates microfibers, we first wash the materials, second sample the effluent or wash water from the back of the machine, and third filter the effluent to isolate the solids or microfibers. Finally, we dried them and then fourth weighed them and counted them. We had three wash machines and we studied triplicates of select samples to assess the precision of our results. That's basically how repeatable uh, the data, uh, uh, our data is. One tricky part was uh, creating a manifold that split the flow eight ways. We wanted to do this in order to create a manageable sample that was representative of the whole effluent. The white buckets connected here are each meant to represent one eighth of the wash water effluent. We first tried garden hose splitters, but they would not deliver equivalent flow with some hoses only delivering a trickle. Playing with the valves or making the manifold perfectly level did little to help. We realized that reducing the hose diameter may deliver equivalent flow. It did, but then it created so much back pressure that the washer would not drain in full. Finally, after several iterations of crafting a new manifold, connecting it, starting up the washer, allowing the machine to fill, and then draining the washer, we found a Goldilocks hose diameter that was small enough to deliver equivalent flow, but large enough that the machine could still drain in full. An even trickier part proved to be count the counting of the microfibers. It was not practical to count one, two, three, six thousand. So we, instead, we used a grid like what is pictured here. Numbers were assigned to each square, and a random number generator told us. Sorry, I went ahead. And a random number generator told us which squares we should look at, typically a minimum of four. We then counted each fiber within those squares, and we were able to use the surface area of the sample filter to calculate the total number of fibers. At all stages, we mitigated for background contamination. Because microfibers enter the air from our clothing, I wore coveralls when running a wash and the washing machines were further protected from other contamination by enclosing the whole area in a tent made of non-fibrous plastic sheeting. The vacuum filter in the next picture was used to process the effluent uh, and uh, was enclosed in a laminar flow hood. That laminar flow hood pulls air in through a HEPA filter to create a positive pressure such that when I reach in with my arms, any contamination that I might introduce is forced out. Finally, Katarina, pictured here at the microscope, is also wearing coveralls while counting the microfibers and, for added protection, the microscopes are covered in non-fibrous plastic. Before we did this study, contributions of textiles to shedding were not well understood. Assessing 37 textiles gives us the most comprehensive picture to date about the shedding behavior of laundry. While the many variables that went into making each textile make our data complex to interpret, differences in microfiber release were expected based on chemistry and design. Of the design features, construction refers to whether a textile is woven or knit. Yarn type is determined by the length of the constituent fibers that make up the yarn, which can be either short, spun staple yarns, or long filaments. Mechanical treatment refers to various physical treatments to the surface of the material, such as brushing the surface to create a raised fuzzy nap. And finally, chemical treatment is self-explanatory. Across the textiles we tested, the weight of the shed fibers uh, found in the wash water effluent ranged from 9.6 milligrams all the way up to 1,240 milligrams per kilogram of textile laundered. That's an estimated 10,000 to 4 million microfibers per kilogram of textile. This photo shows typical fibers shed by a textile. The scale bar is 100 microns, which is about the width of a human hair. The average particle shed from the 37 textiles we laundered was 405 microns long, 
ranging from roughly 48 to 10,272 microns. In a previous study, our lab looked at zooplankton on the left. The average microplastic found in the small animal was 800 microns. Given their size, many of the microfibers uh, that we have uh, shed by the textiles we launder here are bioavailable to zooplankton and may, be, may get entangled in their appendages or stuck in the digested tract. At near the bottom of the food web, zooplankton are thought to be an important food source for larger animals. This graph shows the weight of individual microfibers shed by the individual polyester textiles we laundered. For instance, at the top, fleece double, um, sorry, fleece double velour recycled was the highest shedding at 778 milligrams per kilogram of textile laundered. On average, polyester materials shed 161 milligrams of microfibers per kilogram of textile laundered. The lowest shedding polyester textile was Jersey lightweight at 19 milligrams. The bars are color, code, are, are color coded according to type, as indicated by the legend. Most polyester fabrics studied were mechanically treated fleeces indicated by the orange bars and jerseys indicated by the green bars. There was a tremendous amount of variation, likely due to differences in design. Further studies are coming that will further evaluate the importance of the different design variables. Stay tuned to the plastics lab. Uh, there's still more. On average, nylon materials shed 27 milligrams of microfibers per kilogram of textile laundered, ranging from 11 to 63 milligrams. That's significantly less than the polyester fabrics. Note, however, that there is some overlap with the highest shedding nylon shedding more than the least shedding polyester. Materials in this category consisted of lightweight textiles, that have application in waterproof or windproof clothing and abrasion resi resistant outdoor gear. All were characterized by having filament type yarns and woven construction. The natural textiles we investigated shed on average 165 milligrams per kilogram of textile laundered, ranging from 126 to 214 milligrams, and had shedding rates in the range of the polyester based materials. Natural fibers assumed to originate from textiles have also been reported in the ocean environment. This raises questions about microfiber footprints from textiles constructed with natural fibers, such as cotton. One possible means of mitigation are external lint filters. The lint lever on the left and filter 160 on the right are available for purchase now online. Another study tested a prototype 150 micron or microplastic lover, similar to lint lover, which retained up to 87% of fibers shed by a fleece blanket. The, to test the two lint trap devices, at the plastics lab, we collected both the microfibers retained by the lint trap and the microfibers that pass through the lint trap. Given the mass of lint retained by the filter and the total amount of microfibers shed by the textile, we could calculate the percent mass retained. I can't reveal yet our results, but I can tell you that they show promise for lint traps as a mitigation tool. More results are coming. There are also integrated lint filters that are already common in Asia. This washer is my in-laws in South Korea. You can see a filter in blue in the side of the wash tub. On the right, you can see the filter close up. I believe there is an opportunity for manufacturers here in North America. Our lint filter research is limited, but a researcher in China did evaluate, it, evaluate an integrated lint filter in a different Asian washer. This graph here shows the amount of microfibers found in the final wash water with no filter bag installed, that's in pink, compared to the amount of microfibers found in the final wash water with a filter bag installed, that's in green. The filter was evaluated using polyester, polyamide, which is more or less nylon, and acetate, a type of modified cellulose. The filter bag retained a lot of, uh, retained a lot of, sorry, the filter bag retained a lot of the microfibers from polyamide and acetate, uh, but not polyester. 
the filter bag re generally retained longer microfibers, but not the shorter ones. In conclusion, we now better understand the extent of which textile laundry contributes to microfiber pollution in the aquatic environment, with textile shedding from 9.6 milligrams to 1,240 milligrams per kilogram of textile. Design features like mechanical treatment and textile thickness are important considerations for the apparel sector looking to minimize shedding. A lint trap may be an effective means to mitigate microfiber pollution. More results are coming. Uh, and then finally, we couldn't do this without our partners. So, so thank you very much to Nanaquima Co-op, Patagonia, REI, Metro Vancouver, Arcteryx, Environment and Climate Change Canada. And for the record, my sources are here. Uh, please wash less and consider purchasing a lint trap. So finally, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and I think we should still have time for a few questions. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was great. It was, I loved seeing all the different steps to mm -hmm. the process. And we already have a few questions from the audience. One being with all those different steps to the procedure, how long did this study take kind of from the very beginning, washing these textiles to counting and identifying the microfibers? Right. It was, it was a couple of years. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, so the first step is uh, was uh, basically um, uh, pulling together a partnership that was interested in this research, uh, and then um, coming to a consensus on what we were uh, interested in studying, um, and uh, then like simply getting the materials, uh, agreeing on uh, how the textile should be prepared, um, uh, the protocols for testing them. Um, we had to come up with a protocol for uh, uh, first uh, the way the edges of the textile would be hemmed. Because if we were just to, for example, like cut a bunch of swatches and swatches of material um, and put them in the laundry, the shedding would maybe largely come from the edges of the fabric. And uh, considering that in people's homes they're laundering uh, clothing that has hemmed edges, typically. Uh, our data wouldn't be very uh, representative of uh, the real world picture. Uh, in contrast, if we were just to throw clothes in uh, the washer, um, we wouldn't be able to control uh, variables such as like uh, 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 size and so on. Like, do we test a men's medium, a woman's medium? Do we test children's sizes? It gets, it gets very complicated. And each garment is prepared differently with different types of hemmings. Um, so then we're not necessarily uh, getting a picture of how much the textile shed, but it's more the whole garment. It's too many variables. So we decided to uh, I, 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 I control our results to get more re reproducible data by having these uh, swatches that were uh, uh, basically had like double uh, uh, hemmed, like folded and hemmed and then folded again and hemmed edges. Uh, uh, to control that shedding. Um, yeah, so then we had to, uh, we had to do some practice washes. Um, uh, we experimented with the manifold system, as I said. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, a lot that goes into it. And then of course, at the end, there's a lot of uh, data analysis and QC to make sure all the numbers uh, uh, make sense. Uh, and uh, yeah, right now we're at the, the phase of um, we uh, submitted uh, our, our manuscript and our, our um, uh, so hopefully it will be available um, to the academic community soon, uh, the more detailed results. Well, that's very exciting news and that's definitely something to look out for. With the textile swatches, like about how big were they or how many did you have in each wash load? Uh, that's a good question and offhand, I, I don't remember. They were like, Roughly that big, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, uh, what we also controlled was uh, the the weight of the material. Uh, um, so we actually used um, what were 500 gram samples, and then we just uh, recalculated the numbers per kilogram of textile, uh, just to simplify simplify the messaging. But it was 500 gram samples that we're using, so if, uh, we couldn't get that exact. Uh, weight with this uh, the swatches we were using we just like kind of cut one of the swatches make it smaller 
to get that 500 gram weight. Wow, definitely a lot of, of fine details to work right. with. Um, so I, I like your kind of concluding line, wash less and consider purchasing a lint trap. And we definitely have some great questions coming in from our audience about that. One is, do you know if dirty clothes would shed more or less than clean or new clothes? Does that have an impact maybe how frequently you're washing your clothes? That is a really interesting question, and I think would make for interesting research. Um, I haven't seen any studies published that have looked at that. Um, what I can tell you is that there has been some research that uh, simulated um, aged uh, material, and uh, so they found that uh, that like aged material did shed more. So it seems like, based on the limited research that is out there right now, wear and tear does cause increased shedding. Uh, so some of your maybe favorite pieces that have been washed a lot might be culprits in your wash load. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And another uh, interesting variable is um, um, like basically, so how often you're, you're, you're laundering your clothes. Like uh, I know myself personally, uh, my winter jacket, I very rarely put in the laundry. So that, that means reduced impact, right? So that's, that's another thing. Mm. Uh, that's actually a great kind of segue into one of our questions that just came in. And this was specifically looking at mechanically treated fleeces and how they're often very popular on the West Coast here is kind of hiking and camping wear. And um, are there any other materials that you know of that would kind of accomplish the same uh, element of keeping people warm and dry, but maybe have less impact when you're washing them and shedding fibers, or I don't know, maybe the solution is just don't wash your fleece very often. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's um, a, a really tough one. Um, so uh, like any material is going to have uh, some sort of impact. Um, you could go to natural materials as an alternative, perhaps wool. But then there's going to be a, a, a different impacts associated with like a, a livestock, for instance, and uh, uh, the treatment of those materials to pr produce that uh, uh, wool garment. Um, it, my personal preference is, excuse me, uh, is to uh, uh, favor natural materials. But really, the uh, the data that's coming out and this this area of research into microfibers and microplastics in general is so new that uh, there, it, it's, it's hard to really make a, uh, an informed change in, in, in behavior. It's, it's perhaps too early yet. Definitely on the kind of early trend of this here in North America. And so mm -hmm. uh, some of our audience was asking, kind of impressed that you had demonstrated that there were already some lint traps in other areas. Um, like Korea. And so one of the questions that came in was kind of, why do you, you think that we see those there and not here? And is there anything that folks can do as consumers to maybe put pressure on some North American manufacturers so that we see more of those lint traps in our washing machines? Yeah, I, I, and this is purely speculation. I've thought about this myself. Uh, I know I actually lived uh, in uh, Korea for a few years, and uh, their uh, dryers are not commonplace. Um, instead, people are hanging up their clothes to dry. Um, so that means they're not having uh, a sort of like loose uh, microfibers on their clothes removed during the dry cycle. Um, uh, I, and so that might be one reason that they see more of a need to have uh, uh, filters in, in their washers. Um, or it could just be random cultural differences. It's hard to say. Well, hopefully we'll start seeing more of them here. You did say that some of the little traps are available for sale so that people can kind of buy them and install them in their own units. Uh, do they kind of generally fit most, most washing machines that folks would have if they grab a filter somewhere? Uh, yeah, it's... I, 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 they um, can come with, or they often come with um, different uh, uh, connectors. 
so yeah, it, they should be able to, um, uh, from what I'm told, be uh, it, it connect with various uh, 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 different um, uh, 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 drain hoses in the washer. Um, I do recommend though, um, if if you're uh, not handy in, uh, or uh, uh, with um, pipes and hoses, or especially say if uh, you uh, live in a common building like a strata, uh, uh, to be careful, just hire a plumber and have have the plumber install it to be safe. Because you don't want to have that liability to like uh, say you're in a condo and you uh, have a little flood and then it's it rains down on the unit below you. It's not worth it. Get a plumber. That is very good advice, yeah. definitely. And I, I also really like that idea that if you're in a building with shared laundry or as you said, in a condo where you might have a, a washing unit in your apartment with you that you could connect with maybe your building manager and ask them about installing or looking into some of these filters is a great way to help make a change uh, for any of our audience that was maybe thinking, well, I don't have one directly. Or if you use a laundry facility, maybe checking with them and seeing if they know about this issue and if they'd be interested in making any changes to help make a positive impact. Yeah, for sure. If I uh, uh, say, Laundromats uh, see a demand from customers. That's uh, a, a big step forward for change. Um, I think you know it's so great to see such um, enthusiasm to take action from our audience. And one of the questions that came in was kind of why has there been so little research previously on fiber shedding, and what kind of led to maybe there being enough interest to do this now. How did you come across this opportunity? Uh, yeah, right. Um, so yeah, like 10 years ago, uh, microplastics, microfibers weren't uh, really an issue. No one was really talking about them. Um, and uh, just like uh, with everyone, uh, for scientists, uh, microplastics were largely out of sight, out of mind. They're tiny and it's easy to, uh, uh, to ignore them. Uh, uh, and uh, there was one researcher in um, uh, Australia, his name is Mark Brown. He was, uh, for microfibers anyways, was the one that really uh, uh, identified and connected the problem with uh, uh, home laundry. Um, so he sampled um, uh, 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 sediment or water in the environment, uh, identified microfibers, and then uh, uh, ran a few tests with laundry um, and sampled the wash water from those wash machines and we're seeing a lot of the same stuff. So he was the first one to make that connection several years ago. And uh, I, ever since then, there's just like um, several studies now that are coming out every year uh, that are looking at microfiber shedding. Um, and I, so how did I get into this? Um, well, myself, um, I, I, I found this job uh, through uh, basically uh, a networking on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, this, the topic idea was, was uh, given to me. Um, at this time, I was a student in environmental engineering. Um, and none of my instructors were uh, uh, talking about microplastics. So uh, I, yeah, I was looking myself uh, to do a, a, um, um, a final project for school. And uh, I made the case to them about uh, uh, testing uh, or, or uh, evaluating uh, textiles and laundry, or especially looking at uh, lint traps. Uh, and I had to explain to them that, oh, like microfibers, microplastics, these, this is an actual like real problem because my teachers weren't talking about it. It was an unknown. Yeah. That's always really interesting. I love with all of our presenters kind of finding out how they started their pathway into these careers. I have to say, so do you absolutely hate doing laundry now or is it kind of an interesting part of your day to day? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, it can it can get exhausting. Um, uh, yeah, and, and you saw I, I was in um, a tent enclosed in plastic sheeting, so it, the, the air wasn't very good, and uh, that uh, uh, tent was actually set up in a research hall that's intended for um, uh, doing experiments with wastewater, so there's an odor. Um, I was hot in my coveralls, uh, so it's, 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 uh, 
really hard work. It's grueling. Uh, but at the same time, it's probably the most interesting job I've ever had. Uh, so there's a, a love, love, hate relationship with this job. I feel like probably many people can uh, relate to that for sure. And mm. I'm really impressed to see how kind of much knowledge our audience has. We just had a great question come in about, are there any plans for testing other kinds of filters, whether they're washing machine filters are some of the fiber catching devices like the Cora ball or the guppy friend bag that also might give folks more options for not letting those fibers into the water? I, you, we certainly talked about it, but there's no uh, uh, firm plans uh, uh, right now. Um, so yeah, right now, uh, the focus of the wash machine lab is um, uh, really understanding um, the different, uh, how the different variables like uh, design and uh, chemistry contribute to uh, uh, shedding. So that I believe will be a focus for us going forward. Excellent. Well, we'll definitely look forward to hearing more results. Hopefully we'll have you back on Tales from the Deep with new information at some time in the future. And I think, again, it's really great to see our audience kind of already looking at some of those options because something that is always a great takeaway from these programs is kind of what you can do, the changes that you can make at home. So, uh, you know, kind of applause for our audience for already knowing about all these different things that they can keep an eye out for. And I guess in terms of kind of what to look for maybe in your own closet. So you talked a little bit about some of the makeup of these textiles. Is there anything that people should be cautious of if they're buying, you know, a new winter jacket or a new sweater? Or at this point, is it more about kind of keeping it um, out of the washing machine, not entirely out of your closet? I, yeah. Um, so I, again, um, it's it's hard to uh, really advise any change in behavior uh, because this is still new research. Uh, our results do indicate that uh, fleeces are often um, uh, higher shedding, uh, but like in our in uh, the results um, I, I showed earlier, um, some of those fleeces were like moderate shedding compared to other fleeces where others were high. Um, so yeah, it might make sense to find alternatives to fleeces. Um, uh, perhaps uh, 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 something that is insulated, uh, uh, like basically stuffed with, uh, um, it's, it's a, uh, a liner is more like the, the, the nylons we looked at with the woven like filament construction, so not the, the fuzzy, fuzzy texture. Um, those might shed less, uh, but again, yeah, it's preliminary. Uh, so I don't advise any huge changes in purchasing uh, behavior but it's maybe something to just start thinking about. Absolutely, it's always a good time to start. Um, you listed a few great kind of familiar brands of clothing um, on one of your previous slides. And do we have enough results, I guess, from this study to inform clothing design? Do you know if any of those clothing companies are looking to make a change to what they're producing? Uh, uh, right, and I, I don't know, I, 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 but I, I can say that um, our results have identified um, uh, certain variables that are especially interesting that we may be, we think may be important in contributing to uh, 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 shed, uh, differences in shedding. Um, uh, so for example, uh, the choice of the, the, the yarn type, whether it be like spun staple, and again, that's with uh, shorter fibers spun together, as opposed to the filamentous type yarn, uh, which is uh, uh, longer uh, filaments uh, used to form uh, a yarn. And uh, so one, one advantage actually to synthetics is um, that they can be used to create uh, this filament uh, 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 type yarn. So the story is, is complicated. So basically to produce this filament, uh, the plastic is melted down and then extruded to get this just long, like continuous strand, and then those strands of uh, filaments or fibers, long fibers, are uh, uh, formed together, or spun together to form that yarn. 
So because um, you don't have those uh, uh, short spun staples that are characteristic of like say cotton or wool, because that's the source material, you're using uh, small bits of cotton, staples of cotton or uh, pairs of wool and spinning those together, that's their length as a source material. Um, so yeah, with those uh, uh, long uh, filaments that can be used in synthetics like polyester and nylon um, that uh, may show promise uh, for, for reducing shedding. Um, uh, but more research is needed um, uh, to, to really like confirm uh, those, those trends. Wonderful. And is there anything, I guess, that our audience can do then to help kind of push the industry or other places to looking for more of that research? Um, you know, does it help if they contact some of their favorite brands or kind of how can they help spread the word for more of this great work to happen? But I, yeah, so I, I think uh, uh, dialogue is huge. Uh, and I, I, I mean, you don't have to be aggressive about it, but if lots of people are just going to the store, uh, they're, they're uh, like uh, 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 going to a store uh, and comparing fabrics and they uh, are asking like which, which garment might be uh, uh, lower shedding, at first people are going to be like, what? Where is this coming from? Uh, but eventually uh, uh, the uh, uh, dialogue is going to grow and uh, uh, CEOs are going to be start to hear about it, think about it, and that may affect uh, decision making. Uh, so yeah, just simply uh, 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 mentioning it, I think, uh, to anyone and everyone, um, uh, just to get the word out. Wonderful. I think that's always very good advice is just the more that we're talking about it, that's already going to help kind of make that change that we need to see. So hopefully uh, all of our audience that are here with us today or maybe tuning in and watching the recording afterwards, this will inspire you to strike up a conversation about this next time you're with friends or family or out shopping and working with some of these companies. And so definitely just kind of speaking about it, connecting to it, thinking about it. Those are all great actions that everyone can take. So thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. We're just coming up at the end of our time. So I'll turn it over to the audience one more time if anyone has any last questions that are coming to mind for Matt. And thank you for doing such a wonderful job, not only explaining this great study, but answering all of the questions that were coming in today. While we just see if any more questions are going to pop up in the chat or to our audience, if you'd like to send a thank you to Matt, we'd love to see that come in our way. I'm just gonna grab back the presenter ability and show our audience what's coming up next for Tales from the Deep. Perfect. So we are so excited for next week's program. Again, coming up, we have Dr. Lauren Dares, who's going to be presenting on Dolphins in Distress, Conservation of the Critically Endangered Taiwanese white dolphin and so you can join us hopefully for next week's program at 1 p.m pacific time with tales from the deep uh, live to learn all about the conservation work happening with that population and of course we always want to get the most up-to-date information help let you know when our programs are coming up next. And so you can check out the OceanWise Facebook page where weekly online events are posted. And so you'll see them under this banner, Tales from the Deep Insights from OceanWise Research. And you can get the link to the live stream from the Facebook event or even a nice reminder letting you know that you can tune in and join us. 
We also have lots of different ways of communicating what's happening with Oceanwise Education, as well as the Vancouver Aquarium. So you can find up to date information on all of our live stream programs at ocean.org slash learn online or following us on Twitter at Oceanwise EDU to see what's coming up next. We also have posts on our Instagram stories from both OceanWise and OceanWise Youth and OceanWise Research. So lots of places to find out what's going on. We have continuing programs and resources as well as the posted recordings from these programs at education.ocean.org. If you head over to our teachers and educator resource page, you'll see all the latest, latest posted videos there for you. And we really appreciate our audience coming out and joining us for these sessions, connecting, and as we mentioned, talking about it is such a powerful way to spread the word, whether it's on specific conservation issues or just simply that you enjoy connecting to programs like this one. And so we would love to see your support either by sharing that you enjoyed this program, letting other folks know that it's happening. And you can see what's going on in the community to help support the Vancouver Aquarium and OceanWise at this time by visiting vanaqua.org slash support slash community. And there's always some really great initiatives going on, continuing to help connect us to everyone and kind of get through what is still continuing to be a challenging time for the Vancouver Aquarium and OceanWise. But we really thank you for coming and joining us on this kind of gray day in Vancouver. Maybe if you're joining us from a different city, it's sunny where you are. And we hope that you'll be joining us again soon for next week's Tales from the Deep program. So again, thank you so much, Matt. It was fantastic to learn all about these microfibers and what folks can do. And thank we'll you, everyone. Goodbye. Good <laughs>